Donora, Pennsylvania, a small town 28 miles south of Pittsburgh, once a vital part of America's industrial heartland. Thousands of tons of steel and zinc produced here helped give America the machines it needed to fight World War II and the products that fueled the booming economy in the peacetime that followed. America had never been more productive. But prosperity always comes at a cost. And in 1948, it was the people of Donora who paid the price. In October of that year, Pennsylvania suffered a freak weather event, and in this small town, it caused the worst air pollution disaster in the nation's history. The real facts behind that incident have remained hidden for decades. Devra Davis, a leading environmental scientist, has spent years trying to uncover the truth. This was the main drag of Donora. This is where everything happened and where people would gather. There were stores and um, there were a lot of bars and it was a pretty vibrant community and a lot of activity, a lot different than it is today with a lot of things boarded up. Three steel and zinc mills dominated the town. The mills were everything. Without the mills, there would have been no Denora at all because the vast majority of the people either worked in the mills or had jobs that were somehow related to the mills. It was the sustaining force for community. The town's industrial success relied on its location on the Monongahela River. The river gave life to the mills. In order to make steel, you need lots of water, and you have that here. Denora's location made it prosperous. But its steep valley terrain also made it vulnerable to a weather phenomenon, severe fog, which in 1948 would wreak havoc on this community. Valley fogs are clouds that form at ground level. On a clear night, the ground radiates heat upwards. So the air at ground level gets colder and colder. In a valley, this cold air collects at the bottom. When moist air from the river rises and meets the cold layer, the moisture condenses around tiny particles in the air and forms water droplets. In large quantities, this becomes fog. In Denora, fogs were frequent because there were lots of particles for the water to condense around. And when fog mixes with pollution, it becomes smog. Fog and smog are pretty strange, spooky phenomena. But actually, they're little more than tiny suspended droplets of water hanging in the air. Now, in a lab like this, it's actually very difficult to generate a proper fog. So the only way we can make a fog is by using a fog machine. But in 1940s, in a city like Denora, a combination of fog and the acrid smoke from the local factories would have combined together into a really nasty smog. On October 27, 1948, the town woke up to a thick and acrid smog, classic Denora weather. I don't think anybody ever thought it was anything unusual, truthfully. They at first thought it was just an ordinary heavy smog. They couldn't see their feet at the ground, but that wasn't all that unusual. By the end of that first day, though, this was something different. It didn't dissipate. It didn't go away. The next morning, the town is still shrouded in smog. It's not usually so persistent, and soon its effects are felt all over town. The street lights were on. They didn't go off automatically. It was very difficult to see the traffic signals, so the cars were going very slowly through the community. Some people couldn't even find their ways home. They needed to find others to help them get around. Normally, wind or rain would disperse the smog, 
but not this time. As the week progresses, it continues to build, becoming more and more pervasive. In Denora, the smog got so thick that people reported not being able to see even a foot in front of them. These are really surreal and highly disorienting conditions under which you know, your sight is useless and all you can rely on is your sense of, of hearing. But that wasn't the worst of it. This smog was corrosive and with every breath, people would have been inhaling this corrosive mist to some of the most delicate tissues in their bodies. Before long, it's starting to take its toll on people's health. For local pharmacist Rosemary Iams, it was a busy time. There was probably three times as many people come in that you would normally see. Breathing problems were sweeping through the town. There seemed to be something sinister in this latest relentless smog. Change. Have a nice day. Four days into the extreme weather, on Friday, October 29th, 1948, with many Denorans still oblivious to the surge of illness, the Halloween parade, one of the town's annual highlights, goes ahead as planned. Most of the town turned out for the Halloween parade. The only thing was that I couldn't see the people across McCain Avenue, and that's not a very wide avenue because the smog was so dense. As children parade through the streets, People in houses just a few feet away are reaching a critical condition. Most people, like my mother, carried on, went to the Halloween parade. Behind the scenes, a lot of people were getting worried. Some who've never been sick were developing really bad coughs, and those who were already ill, some of them were starting to die. Toxic smog is starting to take the ultimate toll on the people of Denora. Why it's become so severe is still a mystery to them. They're yet to discover that the force responsible is the weather. In 1948, a gagging smog has smothered the town of Denora, Pennsylvania for four days, infiltrating the lives and lungs of its inhabitants. It seems to be held in place by some invisible force. That force was the weather. In October 1948, Denora and Western Pennsylvania were covered by a vast high pressure system. In other parts of the US, regular weather patterns prevail, but right over Denora, the high pressure brings calm, stable weather. There's no wind or rain to disperse the cold, smog laden air. The extreme weather here is really almost the complete absence of weather in the sense that almost nothing was happening. There was just the same air sitting there, stable and building up pollutants. The high pressure system triggers a hazardous meteorological effect. Air heated by the earth at ground level rises and begins to warm the colder air above it. If the high pressure system persists, a switch eventually occurs and the high level air becomes warmer than the air below it. This is a temperature inversion. In Denora, the warm air acts as a cap over the valley, trapping fumes inside. Special effects expert David Woods replicates the capping effect of a temperature inversion using models and a smoke machine. This is a representation of Denora, a town in a steep-sided valley. As you can see, most of the pollution is actually leaving the valley as it should. And uh, this Perspex lid will represent the warm air cap that formed over the valley, trapping in the pollution. As days go by, the toxic fumes have nowhere to go. The smog builds, getting thicker and swamping the town. Five days in, and the situation takes an alarming turn. Young telephone operator, Alice Uriniak, struggles through the smog to reach work. We had to buzz in to get in the door, and the girl let me in. 
and she said, hurry up, get up here. She says, uh, get your set on, people are dying. The doctor's telephone starts to ring off the hook. After a while, we realized, you know, something was drastically wrong here. The emergency services are inundated with calls, and the hospitals fill up with patients. The deaths that people experienced would have been like suffocating, like trying to uh, breathe through a straw. No matter how deeply you inhale, the lungs are not getting air. By the end of the fifth day, the death toll has reached 18. Several hundred are stricken with illness. Local physician Dr. William Rongus knows the factories are to blame, and he issues an urgent warning to the people of Donora. He told people literally, get the hell out of town. He said that, if you can leave, get out of here. The mill owners deny that they're responsible, but they eventually agree to slow down production in the plants. But in the end, it's not their actions that save the people of Donora. On Sunday, October 31st, it's the weather that finally brings relief. A front came through and it rained. The wind picked up, and with the wind and the rain, the normal cycle of weather could happen again. The smog has lifted, and in the aftermath, the town takes stock. 20 have died. 6,000 more made sick. Within days, workers had returned to the mills. But one question remained. What exactly was it that had killed so many? It's a question that some didn't want answered.